Hi and welcome to Rockin' the Planet. I'm Shane. I'm so glad you could join me tonight to help celebrate our great wealth of New Zealand musical talent. This week, live in our RTP studios, I get to chat with a man who's been described as part guitar and part human, guitar man Carter James Gordon. And if that's not enough, we get to catch up with true members of the Rock and the Planet family. Ah, that's nice. Lisa Corbin and Stray Falcon. But before we meet my guest VIPs, let's see who's been rocking the planet this week. Well, we couldn't continue without first paying tribute to the recent sad passing of two of New Zealand music's greatest contributors. First up, Reggie Rooker, the lovable rogue and frontman for popular 60s band The Classic Affair, who wowed them at Phil Warren's Redwood 1970 Music Festival. Reggie and The Classic Affair appeared on Come On 68, 69, and were resident for a time at Auckland's Monaco nightclub. Reggie went on to star in popular TV show 12 Bar Rhythm and Shoes. Closer to home, the sad passing of Bruce Phantom Robinson, who I opened up my career in 1965 with in a wild Australian uninhibited band called The Pleasers. In 1968, Bruce toured as guitarist with the Come On 68 and 69 stage shows before becoming my songwriting partner, on stage musical director and arranger on all my records. He travelled to Europe twice with me, but in 1973, settled back in New Zealand again to become the founding member of popular 70s band Rocking Horse. Wonderful memories and a rest in peace, good old Richie Rooker and of course Bruce Phantom Robertson. Now let's get started and move on and to my first VIP guest tonight. Rockin' the Planet welcomes Cutter James Gordon. Hello, How are you, mate? mate? <laughs> good to you see you. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I mean, man, when I saw your guitar playing, I was just, I went against the wall. I could not <laughs> believe it. Um, anyone who calls himself a guitar player has to think twice when they, after they've seen you play. You are amazing, man. Oh, thanks so. Man. Oh, Great right. Kiwi spirit, mate. <laughs> wow, good to see you. And uh, you've been playing for some time now, uh, over the years. I mean, let me just let the people know, you've opened up for Elton John in uh, Dunedin, at his big concert in Dunedin. You opened up for Ozzy Osbourne, was that in Wellington, was it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've opened up for quite a lot of people. I mean, you're cool. Slash and a few other cool ones. Slash, but, um... of course, <laughs> yeah. So uh, these guys are all aware of your talents, great musical talents. Um, now, you, is it tough, tough going here for you? I mean, musically, working? Oh, it's pretty tough, man. But at the same time, you know, it's, it, it's, it's good. I like a challenge and, you know, it's been a challenging thing to sort of be able to get by and do what I love, but I just yeah. keep on. Just keep on. Keep on keeping on, on, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I mean, I know you do small, you've done smaller gigs, you know, to make a crust, and uh, like we all have to. Done every um, gig you can possibly and, imagine. And <laughs> you were at the Occidental in Vulcan Lane and Auckland. Yeah, for I've some done time. that, yeah. Done the old gig uh, there. Playing there for a while. Um, and people just don't understand. I don't think they realise just how what a talent they've got sitting there in front of them while they're sipping back on their beers, you know. Well, I've, I just have fun and play guitar, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, when did it all start with the guitar? I mean, it must have started very young to be. Well, I was pretty proficient. young. Yeah, I watched this guy Jimi Hendrix play his Monterey, and then I thought, hey, that's what I want to do. And then um, I did it as a hobby for a bit, and then I got a gig playing guitar for these guys. Um, at the Alhambra and doing my first yeah. little jazz gigs and I got basically got some chips and fifty dollars for my pay and I was like well I don't, that's, that sure beats the paper on. Right? <laughs> this is good I like this. And you know I, I played a bit of rugby and that didn't pan out because I kept dropping yeah. the ball but. <laughs> but you not dropping the ball there. That's what doing alright <laughs> doing all right with Katana. At the Alhambra you say that was a great scene when that was going. Of, <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. a lot of our viewers would know about that place yeah, the Auckland viewers. Pretty anyway. old school. It was, and there was a lot of old school up there. I mean, how old were you when you were playing up there? Probably about 13, 14. Oh, really? They let you in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had my dad. You lied about it. Oh, coming along. Dad. My dad's like a, he's like a musical, uh, you know, musicologist in a way that he's just collected thousands upon thousands of clips of, you know, um, yeah, virtuosos in every style right. of music. Yeah, the Eric Claptons and the Jimi Hendrixes. Well, and those the... guys as well, but, you know, John McLaughlin, Pat Metheny, and oh. Aldi Miller, and those sort of guys, and I was transcribing that stuff as a kid, and then trying to, you know, I mean, you, you learn to play that Is he sort a musician of stuff. Himself? <laughs> nah, he, he had a lot of musician friends that yeah. introduced him to that crazy stuff, and then he got into it. Then he 
you sort of put me on to that for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, then, went, um, I saw John McLaughlin in the UK at uh, yeah. one of those big festivals. I'm talking way back in the 80s. Yeah, that he sort of stuff. was wearing stuff. the white outfit and going out there and doing all this. Man, it just... <laughs> and, uh, I had this crazy brother who was sort of into Bon Jovi and hair metal sort of stuff and wanted yeah. to be top lead singer, you know. Won a couple of karaoke competitions, but... <laughs> yeah. Now, your talents, I mean, they are... I mean, I've seen that you are now the seventh fastest speed metal player in the world. Now, we had... Well. I know it's, it's, it's a big crown to wear, but I know I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> but in the world. But it was a competition on, on the internet, I believe. Well, it was a Shredder Search sort of dime bag. Oh, it was in 2008. It was, it was a wee while yeah. ago. I pretty much just played a bit of guitar in a, in a music shop and then... Um, yeah, put this video, video forward and it did better than what I thought. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and what everyone around the world was voting and they narrowed it down yeah. from, say, a couple of hundred people, guitars. Well, there's probably about 10,000 or 20,000 applicants for that. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And it slowly whittled down and you got down to number seven. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. On that video <laughs> clip that you just played in the back of a music shop. Yeah, well, I was That's trying, pretty... out, trying out a cool amp and a guitar that day and yeah. someone happened to film it. Pretty big accolade. Eh? <laughs> Amazing though, isn't it? Yeah. So you must be good thrilled year. to pieces, you know. Now, what, did you meet, meet Elton John when you were opening up for him? Oh, I, I hung out with this concert. guitarist, which was really cool, mainly. Yeah. Now, who was his guitarist on that show? Good old John Stone, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, Davy Johnson. Yeah, Davy John Johnson, Stone, yeah. yeah Johnson. He's a really cool yeah. guy. Nice guy. Yeah. You nice. showed him a thing or two? Well, you know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wow, you play really amazing. And I was like, well, you know, how about we swap gigs? You know, I can do your yeah, stuff. I'll do and you, can, you can play at the good old pub next week that I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, Ozzy Osbourne, another crazy guy, was uh, was easy to get on with? Did you meet <laughs> easy him? Easy to get on with. I mean, he's got to be pretty amiable, hasn't he? He's pretty ridiculous, mate. I said, yeah. what can I do to get ahead in music? And he simply said, listen, mate, instead of taking 20 different drugs at the same time, stick to three or four. I was like, all right. <laughs> I used to have a problem with drugs. <laughs> now I can afford them. He's like, yeah, yeah, the problem with drugs is like getting caught. I was like, oh, all right, mate. Yeah. Yeah, great conversation. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty I funny I don't want to join his band now. <laughs> well, I was hoping to, um, but, you know, you got another guitarist. And yeah. You know, you've got a great new video out um, with a great song. Um, we're going to have a look at that in a sec. Oh, cool. But um, are you writing all your own material? Yeah, pretty much. This is like, this is for my upcoming blues EP. And I've got this really awesome harmonica player called Nick Reynolds from this band, Alabama 3, who wrote the soundtrack Sopranos. And um, yeah. This uh, is an interesting story because uh, <laughs> if anyone, you know the Alabama 3, um, they're, they're residing in Europe, aren't they? Or oh, yeah, they're in good old Brixton, London, yeah. Yeah, Brixton. And they the wrote the soundtrack up. for... Sopranos, Sopranos yeah. The, the TV series? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, amazing. So, and now you've got powered up with them and you ended up on tour in Europe with them. Well, it's a pretty funny story. I met them at this gig in Womad and the, uh, the lead singer looks a bit like Elvis Presley and uh, the harmonica yeah. player had this long trench shirt jacket. And a lot of people were like, wow, you're at the Soprano soundtrack, you guys are amazing. And then I went up to them and said, oh, yeah, mate, buddy famous, all right, buddy Elvis Presley and Roger Waters. And they said, who the hell are you? I said, oh, I'm your new guitarist. And I've never met them in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was just yeah. half cut. And That's really a great care. audition. And then someone, yeah, this guy gave me a guitar and I played a bit of guitar and they're like, all right. And then I played the Womag gig and then... Auckland and then South Island and then played Byron Bay Blues Fest in Australia with them and then came back and then my band opened for Slash and then we went played a bit, few gigs in Europe and England with them so it was pretty cool. And the gigs went well? I mean, Went uh, really well. Well we also, my band The Wreckage actually recorded an album with them which, which is yet to be released and I'm yeah. still trying to push that but you know that was a pretty cool thing. But you're all bonded and you're, you're still friends and you're in touch with all these people and now, the, <laughs> now you, see the wonder of the internet is the fact that you're recording here, they're over there and you're getting those guys to come in on your record, play their part, send it back to you. Yeah, it's which a, is it's just pretty amazing that all, you know. Yeah, you don't have to travel all the way <laughs> over there to get in the studio, you know. You yeah, we already did that a couple of years ago yeah. but like now, yeah, it's Cool. All right, well, I think it's time. We should have a good look at your new, <laughs> new, new record, new video. Was it filmed here in New Zealand? Yeah, it looks good man like, of mine. It looks Tim like, James did it. <laughs> where is it? One Tree Hill? Or? <laughs> I, I'm just trying it's to a figure very, out. It's a very localised sort of Auckland video, isn't it? It's, yeah. 
actually, what, what was it Albert Park? Was it? I don't know. You've got a couple around, of around uh, that area, sort of around that, yeah. A couple of works of art sitting behind you here in different places. And I thought, <laughs> where is that? I've never seen that piece of art. Anyway, but anyway, check it out yourselves. Here he is, Cutter James Gordon with "Settle the Score." You got a whole lot of trouble. Hell, hell's knocking on my door. Told him I got some money. I believe that they want more Said you gotta settle the score Or the devil's gonna get your soul So I dust up my guitar Ready to go to war I'm against a four-handed demon when he walks, he lights up the floor Said you gotta settle the score For the devil's gonna get your soul Right So I went down to the graveyard To battle for my soul They prepared a dusty grave even dug a hole Said you gotta settle the score Oh, the devil's gonna get your soul Let's See about that I believe we've got a nice CD launch coming up uh, this weekend. Yes, Settle the Score Blues EP, uh, pretty much playing August the 20th at Thirsty Dog K Road. The Thirsty Dog Tavern, of course, that is a great gig. Uh, we go there a lot ourselves, and I play there myself, so uh, there well, you go. I'm, hope I'm hoping the... Um, um... And you know that, now that at the Thirsty Dog now, they have the whole back line there, and the drum kit, and the PA. I mean, you can't go wrong, can you? I mean, any band just walk in, Plug in and play. Thirsty well, I don't know if I'll be able to do the one-man band thing that that great, but I'll be definitely playing guitar. And um... <laughs> are you working on your own? Uh, oh, I might be. Gig? Yeah, I'll be doing a few solo ones, getting a few different guests up, and yeah, um, yeah sort of. So be there, be there. Saturday, August the twentieth, at the Thirsty Dog Tavern. That's yeah. where you're going to be. And the brand new CD. Ten bucks on the door, but yeah. there's an EP and EP. I I'll happily, say. you know, meet you and say hi and say a choice of. Atrocious, atrocious <laughs> opportunities, but yeah, having a good time. <laughs> but before we go, I've got to ask you, Carter, about this guitar. I mean, it's an amazing piece of wood, that. And it looks suspiciously like Kauri. Now, you can tell me more about it, but it's a guitar called a Langcaster. I've yep. seen it here. Which is a locally made guitar, right? Yep. Joe Lang's made a handful of these, and um, there's not too many left. It's a Lancaster guitar with 30,000-year-old um, Cody Swamp Wood. 30,000 years He's old. He's even made the pickups. Now, the good thing about this, uh, I've got a pretty cheap speaker here. Yeah. In fact, it's not even a guitar amp. But because of the high quality of the pickups, yeah. I can pretty much play through something like this and get away with it. So. <laughs> now, they're on par. I mean, they're talking about uh, these things, even Peter Gibson pickup. They're, well, they're, they're modified Gibson pickups, if you like. They're better than Well, they've got more people. magnet in the actual pickups yeah. and it's pretty much got its own onboard preamp and its own onboard overdrive yeah. so it can sound clean and then you sound dirty. <laughs> Joe Lang, who designed the guitars and everything, started off uh, manufacturing these. Yeah. Um, he's retired now, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lang. there's only a handful of these left and, and he's stopped uh, making them. 
and apparently uh, working just for the body itself, it takes over a year and a half or something to get the whole thing into shape that it'll last forever. Um, you know, treating the cowrie and the timber and all the stuff. It's uh, there's a hell of a lot of work, work behind yeah. it, and, um, and and he didn't sell them that much more expensive than a lot of other guitars on the market. Yeah, well, there's it was a labour of love for him. <laughs> yeah. And Joe Lang, do you know any much of the history about uh, Joe Lang? A great name, Langcaster. But do you know much of the history about Joe? Well, he, he's a guitar player himself. No, he's <laughs> he came from Holland. And he did really well in the publishing business over there. Yeah. And then he came to New Zealand. And uh, sorry, this is I don't yeah. know absolutely really. Sorry, mm. sorry, Joe, but this is from what <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and um, he really was into into guitar. Yeah. He, you know, he, he doesn't really play a hell of a lot, but he was into the engineering and design. making design of guitars. And he thought, yeah, we found this Swamp Cowdy wood and thought he'd give that a whirl. And, and he worked on it ever since. And of course, he's retired now. And uh, these are going to become huge collector's items, I'd say. Anyway, you take that and show the world just what great guitars we can make here in New Zealand. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I like to hope I can. <laughs> so yeah, take sure. it on your travels around the world and just keep on rocking. Cheers, man. <laughs>
some of the funky Your commercial stuff. music. Yeah, well, and the funky stuff and, mm, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things too, Shane. I mean, I do appreciate... Uh, uh, the, the genre and the style that Lisa plays. I mean, um, hey, after all, I grew up with it. You know, the whole funk and soul mm -hmm. thing. You know, whether it was James mm -hmm. Brown or a lot of the Serenese stuff, uh, Undisputed Truth. So, yeah. um, you know, there's always been that love, genuine love and appreciation. Um, and um, I guess I've always gone off in a, uh, down a different um, path, uh, way with regards to the genres. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that. But um, yeah, hey, it's it's been a lot of fun every time we come together. And well, you're part of the Rock and the Planet family now. You know, hey, thank you. I mean, we've been running for uh, two and a half years or so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been a very and, long time. Uh, there's a lot of shows under our belt. And yeah. yeah, you guys. Yeah. I mean, Street Falcon oh. yeah. has disrupted our show that was quite a often. Race. <laughs> it was, we saw that one. <laughs> Great times. Bloopers. I got to laugh. The, 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 the bloopers. I think, no, I, I watched the bloopers. The bloopers. It's the bloopers is shocking. a good bloopers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank goodness <laughs> um, the whole show did not make it to ear, so that's okay. <laughs> Terrible. Fortunately, tonight we are going to air, and you're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a great time. I enjoyed that. I, I still have Sorry, tears in my eyes when I with laughter oh. just <laughs> watching that little blooper thing. If you're watching it on YouTube, watch the bloopers with Straight oh. Falcon. They are funny. Um, but he's, he's got a great sense of humour, hasn't he, Lisa? He does. Now it's time for my classic clip, my classic Kiwi clip. And uh, as I was mentioned earlier in the show, Bruce Van Robinson passed away yeah. recently, mm. and a dear oh. friend of mine. And he was in that fabulous band, Rocking Horse, yeah. through the early 70s there, yeah. formed in 73 in Wellington. And uh, mm. they had their biggest hit in 1975 with this song, my classic clip. It's called uh, Through the Southern Moonlight with Rocking Horse. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I, do. I was going to lie and you say lie. I don't, you were but born. I can't lie. I was born, born and I, I do, do remember. remember. I remember. <laughs> All right, well, let's listen to this. I know you're going to dance and bop away. You might do it on Sunday, actually. Yeah. Through the Southern Moonlight, Rocking Horse. Southern Moonlight, Rocking Horse, great band. Of course, Mr. Bruce Phantom Robinson was in that band. I didn't see much of him in that clip. The guy seemed to want to hit the cowbell all the time. Never mind. But if you want to play music like we do here on Rockin' the Planet, you go along to the Music Education Centre. It offers lessons for people of all ages, child or adult, it doesn't matter. The Music Education Centre have centres right across Auckland and they are more than happy to help you choose whatever instrument suits you. Give them a call right away on 0800 893939 and start making your own music, the Music Education Centre. And now back to my VIP guests. Now, musicians are traditionally not that wealthy in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't even rattle my pocket. No. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> in there. Um, have you found that uh, you can make a great living together uh, being musicians professionally? We've made an enjoyable living. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't say great living, but yeah. you know, everyone's looked after and yeah. I mean we have we've been lucky. Um yeah. <clears throat> and for me, it's like that diversifying. Yes. So like teaching, singing and I was gonna say you diversify, yeah, yeah. so you, yeah. you, you do teaching, yeah, music, and then duo and work and instead of just just the big band, you know. Yeah. You've got to, otherwise, you know, so yeah. you've got to have a product product. Yeah. But you've got to have a product for every budget, you yeah. know, every client's budget. It is, here in New so Zealand. So you've got to be I mean, able to present something, mm, like mm. somebody say, I want you, but I, I've only got this. So you've got to have something that yeah. they can afford. And you've got to so, sort of compromise yeah. a little bit here and That's there. Right. Yeah. And 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can do it for the, that price. Yeah. You know, and it works out yeah. that way. Yeah. I don't want to give too yeah, much away. They'll, yeah. they'll be knocking our, yeah. knocking our fees down. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, and for Adam, like... I mean, you know, hey, listen, I, I, look, I've just finished a gig tonight and it was actually quite interesting talking about that um, side of things. And, you know, the, the event promoter who's a, um, uh, a personal friend, well, uh, a personal friend of um, all of us. Yeah, he just turned around and he said, "Oh gosh, um, I'll uh, up the fee next time, guys." Ooh, yeah. That's and I said, what hey, you listen, want. And, that and that's happens. yeah. And I mean, you know, hey, look, it's one of those things. You know, we went out um, tonight, um, you know, to have a fun time, and uh, but it's still a product at the end yeah. of the day. And, yeah, it happened you to know, me last night, yeah. a, a little gig I did, acoustic gig and that, so on. But they turned up and they came back and said, "Here," and they gave me three or just half amount again oh, on wow. top of yeah, what good, I expected good, to get. Yeah. So I was no, very happy great. and yeah. um, mm. that was a bonus. And yep. they had a good turnout and they were yeah. all happy and they said, yeah. look, we can get, and that's good. That's, yeah. mm. that's a, yeah. the people you like to work for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they didn't just stay, stick you on that same old mm. fee, you know, they said, yeah. oh, we can give you some extra, bang. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it works for us all. It's but it's, in general, we, <sighs> we both absolutely love what we do. Yeah. And yeah. Adam plays with a lot of different people, and yeah. that keeps him interested. Mm. And, uh, yeah, and I think that's the I think that's the half of it is actually uh, tr being versatile. Yeah. And as Lisa just said before, it's uh, it's it's giving the uh, uh, the promoter, the events coordinator, uh, what they want, and the yep. um, um, yeah, the client what they want. You certainly give them what they want. Yeah, I know and that. It's just I've seen to be you versatile. perform. Both you guys, you're both. So fantastic. we're giving you yodeling on the twenty first because that's what that. you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the we'll whole practicing. score of the sound of music. That's what we're it. doing. We that's know what that's I wanted. What you want. I know. That's what I'm paying. Get there. Oh, I'll yeah. bring my little nuns out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the cape and that. Yeah, That'll we'll all be there. To charge them more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring the congregation from the church after I've finished. It. All right. I love it. We'll all be there Sunday, twenty-first. Cool. Looking forward thank to you it. so yeah, much. Thank you. Well, it's that time. I've got to go. Thanks to my guests for joining me here tonight: Lisa Corbin, Stray Falcon, and the wonderful Cara James Gordon. We'll be back same time, same place next week. And until then, you just keep on rocking.